Hey guys, CB Super. Today I'm going to show you how to make a moon orbit around a planet inside of DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion tab. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Fusion composition. I'm going to right click inside of the media pool, come down to new Fusion composition. Five seconds is fine. I'm going to hit, hit create, drop that Fusion composition down onto the media pane and jump over to the Fusion page. So you may have already noticed inside of my media pool, I had a couple textures. This one is Jupiter. This one is Mercury. I found these absolutely free online. If you're interested and you want to follow along, the link for those will be in the description. I'm going to go ahead and grab these images of Mercury and Jupiter and just drop them down on the media pane so I can get rid of the media pool and I won't be needing the media pool from here on out. All right, first thing I'm going to do inside of the node panel is I'm actually going to bring down a black background and I'm going to attach that background to the media out. You'll notice that I have dual viewers set up here. If you don't have that, all you have to do is click on this dual viewer button over here and you can place your media out over here on the right and our 3D scene here will go in the left. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these real quick. I'm going to F2, call this one Moon, and this one F2, I will call this Planet. And that's just to keep it organized a little bit in my head. I might move these up just a little bit so I can put some 3D nodes underneath it. So I'm going to need a couple things for my 3D scene. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in two shapes. I'm going to bring in a merged 3D node, and I'm going to bring in a 3D camera and a 3D renderer. Now you'll notice they're all stacked together. We don't actually need them all stacked that way. So let's go ahead and move the shape 3D over here. I can go ahead and disconnect it. I can move this other shape 3D over here. I can disconnect that. I can disconnect this merge node. This merge node is actually going to house the entire 3D scene. I can bring the camera over here off to the right. It will all connect into to this render 3D node. So I can go ahead and connect the moon to one of the shapes and connect the planet to the other shape. Can drive all of this into the merge 3D node, including the 3D camera. And then the merge 3D can plug directly into the render node. And now I need to take this render 3D node and I need to merge it on top of my black background. Now the black background is going to be the basis for our space that's going to go behind all of the 3D assets. So I want everything that's gonna be rendered on top of everything that's in the background. In order to to do that, I need to merge the render in the foreground and the background in the background. So the easiest way to do that is to simply take the render output and drop it on top of the background output, this little gray box. What that's going to do is that's going to automatically create a merge node setup. Now if I take this merge 3D node, I can drop that into this left viewer and now we can see our 3D scene. Now to orbit around in our 3D scene, I'm going to hold down the option or alt button and use my middle mouse button in order to orbit around. I can also hold the command or control control key and scroll in and out. And then everything else is just a matter of using my left mouse button to kind of just move things around. If we look at the actual final output, we notice that the camera is much too close to this first shape. So let's go ahead and take this camera and I'm gonna just move this back a little bit. I'm also gonna take this media out. I'm gonna put this in the right viewer so that, so everything that gets rendered out in this entire pipeline will be shown in this right viewer and only my 3D scene will be in this left viewer. By default, we can see that these shapes are actually planes. That's not going to work. We want them to be spheres so they look a little bit more like planets and moons. So let's go ahead and change the shape from a plane to a sphere. And we can actually make this moon a little bit smaller because we're going to want that to be smaller than the actual planet. And then I can come over to the planet shape, change that one to a sphere as well. And maybe I'll make that one just a little bit bigger. All right, now inside of this moon shape, I'm actually going to pull it forward a little bit so I can see the actual moon. Now we'll notice that the moon is in front of the planet and we don't have to mask anything out because we're actually using 3D shapes. So when this goes behind, if I was to say put this behind the planet, you'll notice that you cannot see it and then I'll bring it back in front and now you see that it is in fact in front of it. So now we have to just animate or orbit the moon around the planet and to do this it's very very simple. Special thanks to Freebie Chill Weather. I had made a video showing how to do a much more difficult version of the same technique and he mentioned why not use a 3D transform node and then just use the pivot and that works and that would be a much faster way but and even then we don't actually even have to use the transform node we can actually use the transform controls that are already built inside of the node itself. So if I come over to this third tab, which is the transform section and over here to the translation, we'll notice that we've already translated in Z, but we can also do some rotation. But in order to do rotation, we wanna be able to actually control the pivot first. So if I click on this pivot and I start to move this in Z, you can see that it's moving this pivot around. So if I put the pivot back over here where the planet is, now when I rotate it around the Y, you'll see that it will rotate in a continuous circle around the planet. And so that's much easier than actually physically animating the planet into four positions and then smoothing them out and then making a continuous loop because I can actually turn this into a continuous loop by using an expression. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and double click inside of this box and hit the equal sign and then enter. And you'll notice that it dropped down a little pick whip with an expression box. And a really easy expression to use is simply time, asterisk or times and number. Now you can choose whatever number you want. If you want it to animate really slowly, you could use say 0.5, but I'm gonna use three because I want it to animate a little bit faster, mostly for the demo so that you can see that it is actually moving around within the five or 10 second time limit. So if I click off here, and I come over to the edit tab. All right, now it's already cached up. Let's just go ahead and run this all the way through. And there you go. Really simple, really easy animation. Of course, we can add stars, we can add effects, we can add shooting stars, you can add spaceships, you can add all kinds of different things to your scene. But this is how you achieve a really simple orbiting planet around another planet. And of course, this doesn't have to be planets. It could be anything you want. Any 3D mesh that you bring in, you can make it orbit using the actual transforms that are inside of each of those. ones. You can also stack your transforms in order to make it orbit around different things. So thanks again for mentioning that, Frigby. When I put out a video and you guys see an easier or a faster or more efficient way to do it, please leave it down in the comments. I learned just as much from you guys as you guys may be learning from me. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys in the next one.